Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Sense. Hope that you're well. Today I have for you 15 different designer fragrances that are gonna get progressively stronger with each one I talk about. So the first one, weak, pathetic. Never lifted anything in its life. Ugh, disgusting. I mean, actually, it doesn't really smell that bad, but no performance. And then we're gonna work our way up to the last one, which is the most powerful, straight up roid raging, freaking out, throwing weights all over the place, lots of power. And I think most of you will agree with the lineup in terms of you know weakest to strongest, though maybe uh, one or two of these might work a little better for you than it does for me. So do keep in mind that this is my own personal ranking of these fragrances. And this was kind of fun to do. So I might do another one of these in the future. I kind of just grabbed 15 and was like, well, let's sort these out. Uh, but obviously there are hundreds and hundreds of other fragrances not included here, and maybe I'll do those in a future video. Now these are linked in the description below in the order that I'm featuring them. So the first one that is linked below is the weakest on down to the most powerful. So those are down below. Let's get it kicked off. All right, let's get it kicked off with the weakest of them all, 47. 11. Now, 4711 does not smell bad. This stuff is actually really refreshing, which is actually what it's meant to do. It's not really a fragrance that's supposed to be really strong. It's not a fragrance that's supposed to last a long time. It's one that's made to just give you a boost, essentially. And it actually does a really good job at that. And it's also really cheap. So this is not the type of fragrance where you can say, oh, you know, it cost me so much, but it's really weak. Nah, stuff is like pennies for a milliliter. It looks like I'm gonna take a drink of this right now. No. <laughs> it smells good enough to drink though, almost. <laughs> smell on my finger. It's normal. Now in terms of smell, 4711 is pretty close to Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford. So if you know that one, you know kind of how this smells. Essentially Neroli Portofino is like a modernized, pumped up version of this. And it's also much more expensive with higher quality ingredients. But again, this stuff is crazy, super cheap. You can get enormous bottles of 4711. And, and part of that is again, because it's uh, kind of pathetic in terms of performance. But Smells nice, good for summertime. We move up one notch, more powerful than 4711, but still not powerful really. Tommy Bahama Set Sail St. Bart's. And this one is an Eau de Cologne. So again, not really a surprise that it's gonna be a weak performer when you consider Eau de Cologne concentration, made for summertime, yeah. But it is, once again, very affordable. Stuff doesn't cost that much, and it smells good. Really nice, actually. A really good vacation fragrance, beach fragrance, has kind of a, you know, tropical booziness to it, a sea salty vibe as well. It's been compared to Virgin Island water from Creed, kind of like a cheap alternative that gets you somewhat similar. This is basically that for Virgin Island water, but it is definitely on the weak side. So uh, you do have to know that going in. That being said, like I said, when I brought this up, it's really cheap. You can spray it on heavily and nobody's gonna be offended. Before we go to the next one, I wanna plug my other channel, Extra Gents Sense. Check that out if you've not done so already. Got more fragrance content there, lists, reviews, all that stuff. All right, let's move on. The next one, Dolce Gabbana is the one eau de toilette. We are still in weak territory here. Not strong yet. Obviously, we're just three in. Now, while the one eau de toilette is not a strong fragrance in terms of projection, it's not really a longevity monster either, it once again smells great. So we've had three fragrances that are weak, but smell good. And of course that kicked off the whole The One line, which is very well known now and has tons of flankers, some better than others. This is a solid, solid date night fragrance. Really sexy, compliment puller, nice, warm, sweet. I would say that the Eau de Parfum version of this is probably gonna be better for more people. Better performance, just a little bit richer overall, a little more appealing for a lot of people. But the one Eau de Toilette still gets the job done, still smells great. Unfortunately, it's just kind of weak. That being said, a lot of times with date night fragrances, better to have something that's not overwhelming because that's gonna be a little more uh, seductive, a little more alluring. Now that kind of deal where you're like pulling somebody in because they wanna get a whiff of what you're wearing as opposed to wearing something that's so strong it just bashes them over the head, caveman style. You know, you wanna be a little more suave. You don't wanna be a Neanderthal, come on. From there, we move on to another freshy, another extremely well-known fragrance, Nautica Voyage. Now I know with this one, there's gonna be some people who say, nah, man, Nautica Voyage has very, very good performance for me. Uh, but for a lot of people, Voyage is a little more on the weak side. 
Definitely stronger than these two, as far as fresh fragrances go, but not really a beast for a lot of people out there. Now, if you have a bottle like mine, the old uh, metal cap, maybe you get better performance, but still. Now, Voyage, as far as cheapies go, big hype beast. For years and years, people have been like, yo, Nautica Voyage, that's one of the go-tos that you have to get when you start collecting fragrances. And that has at times caused backlash because people will be like, oh, it's not that good. But at the same time, stuff is like, what, 20 bucks? So you do have to grade it on a bit of a curve there. You know, you can't really say, oh, this $20 fragrance is worse than that $80 one. Yeah, surprise. Next thing you're gonna tell me a $30,000 performance car isn't as fast as a $120,000 performance car. No way. It's four times more expensive, <laughs> yeah. When you take that into consideration, the price point that you can get this for, I think it's really solid. Nicely done, has a good green tinge to it. I enjoy green fragrances. I like this one. Do I think it's like the end all be all fresh fragrance of all time? Of course not, but for the price point, especially when you're getting started off, pretty good, pretty good. Compliment puller too. Performance beast. Nah. Before we head to the next one, here are some codes you can use to save money at a bunch of different websites. They're also linked below, so take note of those codes for any of these sites should you shop there to save some money. All right, next up we got one that I often link with the one. It's La Nuit de Lome Eau de Toilette. Now, some people may say, hey man, La Nuit is weaker for me than Voyage, and maybe you'd swap them. For me, I've actually gotten a little better longevity over the years from La Nuit than Voyage. Still though, this is not strong. We're still not in strong territory. We're not in average territory yet. Now, as I said, for me, La Nuit and The One kind of linked in my mind as some of the go-to date night fragrances from years gone by that still work very well today. The cardamom is what people really cling on to with this fragrance, and it is a huge compliment puller, big attention grabber. That's why it has been hyped multiple times over the years. The projection here, not beastly, but the longevity is okay. And with it being that type of date night fragrance, like I talked about with the one where you want to, you know, have that alluring feel, it crushes that. So La Nuit can go in right there. After that one, we have Burberry London, my itty bitty one ounce bottle. So Burberry London is another fragrance in the style of La Nuit and the one in that it's more of a fall, winter time, warm, spicy scent profile that also is not really that strong. Now, if you've never smelled Burberry London, it smells great. Uh, it has kind of a holiday vibe to it, a holiday feel to it. So it's gonna remind a lot of people of, you know, basically November through December, you know, like that time frame when people are gathering uh, together like families and everything and having big meals and all that stuff. That's kind of when this gets lumped into use. It has port wine as a note, along with uh, tobacco, a lot of spices in there. Really cozy, smells nice, uh, overlooked a lot of times nowadays. And while it's not the strongest thing out there, it's still worth a pickup as long as you don't spend too much. So this next one is kind of the tipping point. Uh, this one, I feel like for the type of fragrance it is, is completely passable in terms of performance. And it's right down the middle. You know, it's good, it's not great, but it's also not bad. And it's Artisan Pure from Varbados. Now I know some people are gonna say, oh, Artisan Pure, I get no performance from that garbage. But for me, it's always been solid. Again, taking into account that it is a fresh fragrance that is crazy cheap. It's like 30, $35 or something like that nowadays. Nice, good push off the top here. Very citrusy, very clean, fresh, a little bit elegant and classy as well. And I know Varvados in general just gets crapped on for its performance. A lot of people just always poo-pooing Varvados, uh, but that's overblown sometimes. Now, some of their fragrances are uh, definitely underperformers. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it's not all of them. So this one, yes, I slot above all of these, but everything from this point forward, I feel like is considerably stronger than everything here. Next up, Aqua de Jo Parfum from Armani. Now, obviously with this being an Aqua de Jo, it is once again a fresh fragrance, but it has considerably more push and much better longevity than these ones here off my skin. Now, Aqua de Jo Parfum is of course a replacement for Aqua de Jo Profumo, which was unceremoniously guillotined and replaced by this. And like Profumo, pretty good staying power for a fresh fragrance. 
while at the same time giving you that versatility, that compliment factor that you expect from an Aqua de Jo. So Aqua de Jo Parfum goes here. And now we're getting into the fragrances that I think are actually considerably above average. So we kind of hit like uh, average here, you know, where it goes a little below, basically average, a little above, and now strong. The next one up is JPG La Mala Parfum, and that is fantastic. It smells awesome. The longevity is well above average, really good longevity. The projection is above average too. It's just some of the other ones coming up are even higher as far as projection and longevity both are concerned. So that lets you know there's some pretty strong stuff coming up because this is not a weak one at all. And La Mal de Parfum is one of the most popular fragrances, at least in the fragrance community, in the designer realm since it came out, if not the most popular. This stuff has been heaped with praise and for good reason. I think it smells absolutely fantastic during fall and winter. You cannot go wrong with this one. Next up is Eros, the Eau de Parfum. So Versace Eros has always been a bit of a beast fragrance for me, whether we're talking the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, or the Parfum. And that's really one of the reasons also that Eros, the original Eau de Toilette, got lumped in uh, with the clubbing fragrance crowd because it's strong, it projects, it lasts, it's sweet, gets people's attention. And so for a while there, when it first came out, people were like, oh, Eros, that's for the club. And just the club, that's it, it's just for the club. But that's not true at all. You can wear Eros about anywhere. I wore it to the office pretty consistently. Uh, you can wear it to more formal occasions. Just don't go crazy heavy with the trigger. Now I know a lot of people would be like, nah, man, you gotta wear something less sweet. Nah, you can wear Eros, just like I said, don't overdose. You can wear the stuff about anywhere. And the Eau de Parfum is that perfect middle ground for a lot of people between the Parfum and the Eau de Toilette. Little bit more mature than the Eau de Toilette, uh, but still has that sweetness from the Eau de Toilette as well. And the performance is great. Little bit goes a long way with this one. All right, we're in the top five. So now we're into some fragrances that have some real, real heavy push. Next up is Ferragamo Womo Signature. Didn't know whether to put this one here or swap it with the next one that we're gonna talk about, but I just settled on this spot for this one. Now, this has fantastic performance. Longevity projection is great. Really just fall and winter time, that's when you wanna wear this one. I wouldn't wear this during spring, wouldn't wear this during summer. Good coffee note in here. Roasted coffee gonna be one of the main things that you pick out, but it does have some sweetness in there to balance it out as well. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, Womo and Womo Signature from Ferragamo are kind of under the radar compliment pullers. When you first smell them, maybe you wouldn't think that. Maybe you'd be like, well, I don't know, yeah, I'd probably go with Savage, right? But no, they work great for compliments and they have the performance and they don't cost that much from discounters. Number four, another black bottle, the most wanted from Azaro. This stuff crushes. This is one that just gets tons of attention. It lasts a long time, it projects heavily, smells great. It's very modern in the way that it's done. That kind of sweetness that's used here is really popular right now. So you could compare this to a few other fragrances out there just as far as having similarities and overall scent profile to some other stuff, but it smells awesome. Which is also why it's extremely popular and also why Azaro seems to be concentrating on the most wanted right now what with their new release and now they have three fragrances in the most wanted line that have come out in pretty short order so the most wanted there now we're in the top three in the top three Ugh. okay another black bottle i know some people are not going to like this one but club de nuit intense man mm. so club de nuit intense man of course is a clone of creeds of ventus and this stuff is strong off my skin club de nuit intense man has always projected pretty heavily and last a long time. It's gonna be one of the reasons it's so popular, that and it's inexpensive, and it's also a good compliment puller. So you put those things together, big performance, big compliments, low price, popular. The issue with this one for a lot of people has been, well, for one, it's a clone. Some people hate clones, so there is that. Uh, but the opening, the opening can be a little iffy, a little bit too much lemon, you know, a little harsh, a little bit chemically. Once it settles though, which doesn't take too long, smells really good, especially in the air. And so then it no longer matters. And if you're spraying this on and you're going out somewhere, 
by the time you get to where you're going, that opening no longer matters. So Club de Nuit Intense Man number three. Number two, another black bottle. Black bottles mean strong, huh? It sure looks that way. Number two is Chopard Black Incense Malaki. This stuff, it packs a punch. Yes, yes, it sure does. This stuff will last and project like a monster. And I will also tell you that this is not as easily worn by most people than literally everything else here. Now, I'm not saying that it's worse than everything else here. That's not what I said. What I'm saying is you go up to a, a normal person, average person, and you say, hey, smell aqua de Joe. They'll be like, oh, great. And then they go, hey, smell this. And they'll go, wow. That's different. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's good. I enjoy it. I think it smells great. But it has, you know, that kind of leathery aspect that's been found in, in fragrances like Gucci Guilty Absolute, for example. Uh, it's got some of that in here, which makes sense. Uh, same perfumer. Now, there's not just leather here. There's also sweetness that helps balance it out. The quality is exceptional. From discounters, you can get this for like $65. And at that price point, it's crazy. But be aware, it's very strong. And for your average person, it may be a bit too much. All right, the most powerful, the strongest of all of these, Sauvage Elixir. Yeah, I know, Sauvage Elixir. But listen, this stuff is stupid powerful off my skin. I wore this yesterday, I sprayed it on in the afternoon about 2 p.m. or so. This morning when I woke up, I could still smell this where I sprayed it on my arm. That's not exaggeration. That's not me making stuff up. I legitimately could still smell this. And when I walked over to where my wife was this morning in the kitchen, she was like, did you spray that on again? And I said, no, it's still the same stuff from yesterday. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna work like that with everybody every time or anything like that. And no, I didn't go insane with the number of sprays. But for me, this bottle of Sauvage Elixir is nuclear. Yeah, it's just, it's goofy, stupid strong, okay? You don't need much. Legitimately, when I wear this, I think two sprays. Two sprays, I'm good. If you spray this on like a psychopath, you hit yourself with like 10, 12 sprays of this stuff, Lord help you. People are gonna be like, Yeah, pretty much like that. You will be radioactive. You will be a ghoul from Fallout. You will turn into a ghoul from Fallout if you spray too much of this stuff on, okay? Keep it real with this. Do not go insane. Couple sprays, you're gonna be smelling like a million bucks, like a gentleman. You're gonna be smelling sexy. <sighs> 10, 12, 15 sprays of that. No, people will be running away from you like they're running away from the blob, okay? And it's an old movie. Savage Elixir, most powerful of all of these for me. So there we go. Weakest up to strongest for these 15. Like I said, maybe I'll do another one of these. I'll grab 15 more randos and just put them in there and, and rank them out and see how they go. Uh, let me know how you would switch things up, how some things work better for you or uh, maybe some things work worse for you. Like I said, I know for some people, uh, Artist and Pure is not gonna work as well for them as it does for me, or maybe even Savage Elixir. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.